So, um, Keith, you wrote um, our From the Archive piece this month about basically how Britain dealt with post-war Germany and some of the dilemmas, sort of economic, political, moral dilemmas that Britain faced with how to deal um, with Germany after the Second World War. Um, but I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about actual post-war Germany um, and how Germany was affected, um, how people's lives were affected as well. Yes, well, the I mean, the most obvious uh, way that people's lives were affected was uh, in all the the physical destruction that they were they were uh, forced to experience through 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 the war. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily something that they themselves particularly noticed after the war because it had happened gradually during during the war with all the bombing and so on. But uh, the people who did notice it were were the Allied officials who came across from Britain in 1945 to to administer the country, and you know they, they had a an idea of what they were going to uh, see when they got there. They knew that there'd been a big bombing campaign. They they uh, some of them had seen photographs um, before they came, and but th they kind of thought it was going to be along the same lines as. Uh, the Blitz was in Britain, and they, they couldn't have been more wrong. When, when they arrived, the sheer extent of the devastation really shocked them. All, all their letters and diary entries at the time uh, really bring this home. Um, I, I mean, just to put some figures on it, uh, in Britain, there were about 200,000 homes were destroyed by the Blitz. Now, in Germany, it was more like three and a half million homes destroyed. So in, in purely numerical terms, it's 18 times as bad in Germany as it was in Britain. Um, so, you know, what, what did this mean for ordinary people? Well, it meant that there are about 10 million homeless Germans in Germany. Um, they, they've got nowhere to live but apart from you know, making makeshift uh, shelters in between piles of rubble with a bit of tarpaulin spread over the top. Or they're living in in burnt out basements. They're, they're living in encampments in the woods. There was even a, a little girl who was found um, living in a crack in the Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial in Berlin. So these are the kind of conditions that people were forced to live in after the war. And then on top of that, I guess there's psycho. I mean, that's kind of the physical side. But then there's the psychological damage and the fact that other countries are, are treating them as evil people or the products of a kind of evil country that has to be punished. Well, the, I mean, the Germans were, uh, as as you can expect, uh, were the, the pariahs of, of, of Europe um, after the war, and, and they were treated as such. I mean, I mean revenge, that's one of the, the main themes of my book, actually, is, is reve revenge is everywhere. It's at every level of society. Um, people don't want to... Uh, they don't want to associate with Germans. Uh, they certainly don't want to have Germans in their own country. So there was a huge program of expulsions which took place across Europe, actually, um, uh, where where people removed their ethnic German populations and, and sort of shunted them across the border into Germany. Um, of course, when they got there, they, uh, they they were not exactly welcomed. I mean, I mean, you already had. 10 million homeless people, the last thing you needed was another 16 million <laughs> refugees on top. And, um, I mean, hunger was was epidemic in, in Germany as well. So 16 million more mouths to feed were not, you know, that's, that's not going to be welcomed either. It, it started in, probably in Czechoslovakia, uh, around that, that sort of fringe area of the, of the country, which was called the Sudetenland. Um, the Sudetenland was was kind of what started the war off in the first place mm. when the, when the Nazis invaded to supposedly liberate their German minority there, and naturally the the Czechs didn't want to have this minority still living within the fringes of their country, and, and possibly you know, bringing the same thing to them again in the future. So they they rounded up all, all the Germans who who lived around the the edges of Czechoslovakia and and and, and expelled them across the border. Now some of the expulsions were. Were, well, they were brutal to say the least. I mean, the, the, the standard way of doing things was to um, knock on the door of uh, the, whatever German family you wanted to get rid of, uh, tell them they had 10 minutes to, to grab their things, and then they were herded together and, and literally walked across the border and, and not allowed back again. Along the way, 
there were um, various atrocities that took place. I mean, quite understandable, I suppose, given what the Czechs themselves had been through, that, that people wanted to take revenge. But, but nevertheless, it, it, there were atrocities. Um, the most famous of them happened at a place called Usti nad Labem, which the Germans knew as Ausig. I mean, there have been lots of exaggerations about what happened, what actually happened there, but um, there were at least dozens of people who were who were shot um, or thrown into the river. There was a, a, a mother and her child who were thrown into the river and drowned. Um, then there were plenty of other places where there were similar massacres. One, one of the most interesting ones, actually, was um, in a place called Prerov, where there was a trainload of Germans who were being expelled from Slovakia. It was coming through the Czech Republic um, on its way to Germany. And a, a, a detachment of, of Czech um, militiamen stopped the train, pulled everybody off and uh, lined them up along the railway track and shot them. Now, amongst the 260 or so people who were on this train, there were 74 children, the youngest of which was only eight months old. And... Um, you know, later on, when they asked the, the, the leader of this militia group why he'd killed the children, he's supposed to have answered, well, you know, what was I supposed to do with the children when I'd already shot their parents? So it just goes to show uh, there's, there's, you know, the Nazis don't have a, a, a monopoly on, on, on violence and atrocity. And have there been any studies of what those who did get back to Germany, how they were integrated or accepted or not there was a, uh, a, a an entire ministry set up uh, in germany called the federal ministry for expellees and war victims um and and their job was to to try and integrate these people but the problem is that that a lot of germans the reich germans themselves didn't view these people as proper germans they, they thought thought of them as foreigners they didn't want them in their midst they they, they didn't want to give them jobs they certainly didn't want to, to house them or, or put them up in their own places. So uh, a lot of these people were um, sort of festering in, in, in displaced person camps well into the 1950s. And there were all kinds of complaints about how they were or were not integrated into society. Arguably, they're still not really integrated mm -hmm. into society. They, they, they're still, to this day, maybe not the original generation, but their children are still talking about trying to go back to those countries where they that they were originally expelled from, which is causing all kinds of problems in the, the economic union, as, as, as uh, the other countries, the Eastern European countries, argue against this vociferously. Finally, we can just talk a little bit about the historiography and how that has evolved. I suppose in the mainstream... Uh, all the way through from the sort of 1940s through the 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s even, the, um, the Germans were, I mean, they were always cast as the villains. They, they, it was quite black and white. Germany were the perpetrators and everybody else were the victims. I mean, a few exceptions, of course, but that's that sort of mainstream view. And you only need to see, you know, 1970s war films to, to see the way that they're, they're portrayed. Now, to a certain extent, the... Germans themselves have kind of taken that on the chin um, and uh, sort of accepted it to a, to a degree. Um, you know, that this the cliche of of the uh, German exchange student who always apologises for the war. I mean, that, that's based on reality. I, I remember growing up surrounded by German exchange students who were doing exactly that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Germans were always cast as the villains. Now, in the 1990s, I suppose... Uh, after reunification and the fall of the Berlin Wall and so on, attitudes started to change a little. Um, uh, Germans started to realise that they were not only perpetrators but also victims. Um, so, for example, there was a there was a um, there was a famous documentary that was shown on German German television in 1992, all about the rapes that happened after the war, particularly at the hands of, of Soviet soldiers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was enormously important um, that this kind of story was told. And it hadn't really, it had been taboo for a long time. Um, but there was an enormous amount of controversy over this. 
there were all kinds of academics who were writing to the press um, complaining that the, the, the documentary had never been aired because um, it, they, they were worried that if Germans started to see themselves as victims of atrocity, they might start to lose sight of the fact that they had also been perpetrators. Mm -hmm. And they were also slightly worried that uh, you know, the, the, the horror of what these women had gone through would be uh, seen in some way as sort of payment for the crimes that Germans themselves had committed. So in a, in a sort of sick kind of way, it would cancel out the, the evils of the Holocaust. So anyway, so through the 1990s, there was a, a, a sort of swing the other way um, where Germans began to see themselves much more as, as victims, culminating in a book by Jörg Friedrich, which was a massive bestseller in Germany, um, uh, all about the experience of German civilians under Allied bombing. It's only now, really, that, that a balance is kind of being struck where, where things aren't seen in such black and white terms. People are beginning to see things more in shades of grey. And I think it's no coincidence that this is about the time, you know, it's about 70 years after the war. And uh, that, that generation is, is beginning to die off. So you know, the emotions around the subject are, are not quite as high as they, they once were.